as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is a very special episode. This is our Christmas show. Um, we, we, we got some things to get through today. Uh, you know what I mean? That's just a whole lot. It's the holiday season. Um, Merry Christmas, first and foremost, to everybody. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. Happy holidays to everyone. Let me introduce my co-host, the legend, legend in two games. What's good, bro? What's really good, bro? And as you mentioned, happy holidays to everyone out there. We appreciate you guys rocking with us and supporting us through all these years. That's a fact. I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed this year, uh, Eric, because you know, we we used to, you know, we make them phone calls. We got a lot of connections up at the North Pole, and we're able to get Santa Claus to come to the TV station every year. Um, but we we are gonna be, you know what I'm saying, doing this thing through Zoom this year. Um, and it'll you guys will see the, the playback on, on um on Thursday. But so I'm a little bit disappointed about that. But we got some good news though that we're gonna be doing. Um, our charity tour continues. We, we did not stop uh, the, the grind as far as giving back to, to these kids around Christmas time, but we'll get into that a little bit later. And we may be able to still squeeze in some airtime with, uh, with with old St. Nick. So just, just bear with us. But uh, we do got some sports that we gotta get into today. There are a couple of games that will be going down on, uh, on Christmas day. So we're just gonna break down those games, give a little preview, give our staff picks. Um, and then we'll talk about everything that's going to be going on with the with the charity tour um, this this week as well. Uh, we're going to start off with the NFL, though, Eric. Uh, we got one game, one Christmas Day game. Uh, New Orleans, they got the uh, they taking on the, the 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 Minnesota Vikings. They will be at home. Um, I'm a little bit little bit disappointed because uh, um, you know the, the the Saints lost their best receiver, who's arguably the best receiver in football. He's going to be out um for the remainder of the year he should be back for the playoffs but he won't be here for the regular season and i have him in fantasy football which sucks for me um michael thomas obviously you guys you guys don't know uh i think he, he's probably the best receiver in, in football uh, but he'll miss the rest of the season uh but the vikings have struggled this season as well they're not a playoff team um what do you think though who gets that who gets that christmas uh christmas day victory so I'm, I'm just projecting ahead a little bit because uh, week 15 isn't officially wrapped up. So it looks like New Orleans may be in a must win situation. We saw Tom Tuchel have a great comeback again against Atlanta. I mean, I, I think everybody has comebacks against Atlanta. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you're having a bad week, just play Atlanta and, and you'll figure it out. Um, right. But with that being said, the gap has been closed a little bit in the division. And I think the Saints want to be able to secure that division and, and possibly hold on to any hopes of a number one seed. So I expect them to come out strong against a Minnesota team that has nothing to play for at this point. Yeah, that's a fact. I got I got I got to agree with you uh, on, on that one. Uh, I think I mean, I think either way, again, it sucks that Michael Thomas won't be there. But, you know, going by what was going down this week in that uh, Chiefs game. I don't I don't, I don't know. They, they're not they're not playing the Falcons. So I don't know if they're going to get to be able to come back. Uh, from a two touchdown deficit <laughs> against probably the best team in footballs. Fantasy football playoffs uh, are going down right now um, in the Real Fans Real Talk Fantasy Football League. Eric, I was pulling for you. I thought you had a chance to sneak in uh, to the playoffs, but tiebreakers uh, reared their ugly heads, and unfortunately, you didn't make it. But you are in the consolation bracket. I don't know, if, you know, if that means much to you, but you do got to buy this this week. 
and the Constellation bracket. Listen, we, go, go ahead. We play to win the games, all right? We, we, we're, we're, not, we're not officially in the playoffs, so we're done. We're, we're scouting for next year's draft. Unfortunately, you know, we got off to a good start. We were like five and two, and then the wheels came off a little bit for us. And then, like I said, we, we end up tied for the last spot, but we didn't have the tiebreaker. So we're focused on the draft now. Like like the Jets should have been instead of trying to beat the Rams. Uh, let's jump over into the uh, the NBA. Uh, we we got five games going down on our Christmas Day, which is exciting because because of COVID, we didn't know if we were going to get Christmas games or not. We didn't know if the season was going to start in December. You know what I'm saying? We we weren't expecting it till January because there were so many mixed uh, you know responses to this to, to the season and when it was going to start. So we actually didn't know if we were even going to get games on Christmas, but you know, you and I both know the Christmas day NBA games is a huge staple. It's, it's, it's a big day. Uh, you know what I mean? And the NBA, like th those games, like you, you got to love it. NBA on Christmas day. So we got five games. Absolutely. You, but, uh, you said it, you said it a few months back when we were waiting to see if the league was going to start in time that as adults, nothing makes us feel more like Christmas than knowing a full slate of NBA games would be played. So yes. the fact that we have it, no matter what's going on within the country and, and dealing with this virus, we got five games on Christmas Day that we get to sit back and enjoy. You know, after the kids then open up their gifts, we get to kick back now. And, and these are our gifts as adults. That's a fact. So we're going we're gonna to start off with the, with the noon game. We got the Young Bulls, the, 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 the Pelicans out in New Orleans, and uh, they're going to be taking on defending champion Miami Heat. Uh, this, this was actually – a tough one for me uh, because we're going to go into the season where Zion is going to be healthy. So I think now this year is going to be the kind of show improve year for Zion. If he can actually stay healthy and, you know, stay on the court and get the, get those minutes in. Uh, I believe ESPN had him ranked at like 22. Uh, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So he got, he got to show improve. Yeah. Absurd. But show us that 22. Yeah, it's absurd that they had him ranked that high. They had him above John Morant, which is ridiculous in my opinion. Yeah, especially after coming off a winning rookie of the year, deservedly. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I, I got I to gotta go with Miami on this one, man. I'm sorry. I got to go with, with Jimmy Butler and, uh, and my, my main man, Swaggy T, man. I, I got to go with, with, with the Eastern Conference champions. I just think the the experience um, and then, you know, coming off of, of losing in the finals, I know Miami's coming into this season with a chip on their shoulder. Um, you know, a lot of people have dropped them down uh, on the list in the Eastern Conference. You know, a lot of the reason being because Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving have looked so good uh, during the preseason in, in Miami. I feel like it's becoming the forgotten team. But we can't forget about the Eastern Conference champions. You know, the, the team that, that beat uh, the, the Milwaukee Bucks, who were the favorite this past season in the second round to move on to the Eastern Conference Finals, then went on and, and beat the Celtics, who people a lot of people also have ranked ahead of uh, Miami right now as far as their projections going to the Eastern Conference. So they got a chip on their shoulder. You know, uh, those Pat Riley teams, you know, they, they always come in with, with something to prove, and it's just hard-nosed, grit, tough basketball so I'm going with, 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 with Miami on Christmas Day. Who are you taking? So I was leaning the same way because you made some great points, and I agree. I think they're a little overlooked because everyone's caught up on the hype train of some of the other Eastern Conference teams. Obviously, Brooklyn with their guys, as you mentioned, coming back. People want to see if Boston can take the next step in their evolution. Everyone's really excited about what's going on with the Wizards. Miami's kind of flying under the radar. And under normal circumstances, I would have taken Miami because this is going to be their home opener. So if they would have been fans, I would have expected a certain energy. But I do feel that this Pelicans team is, as you mentioned, the, the young guns, and they're a very exciting team. And Lonzo looked like he's actually corrected a shot. And I think they're going to be a really good team. There's no drop off, though they do lose Drew Holiday. I think Eric Bledsoe fits them pretty well for what he does defensively and, and being able to again, facilitate the offense when Lonzo doesn't have the ball. And I really think Brandon Ingram's a stud. I think this year he takes another step in his evolution um, as an all-star in the league. So I'm going to take the Pelicans on Christmas Day. Uh, game two, uh, that's the, the early afternoon game, 2.30 Golden State at Milwaukee. That's going to be an exciting game. Uh, Steph Curry with the shot. 
is is back in action, and they got a, they got a they got a pretty deep roster. Obviously, we know Clay Thompson isn't going to be there; he's out for for the season with that with that leg injury. Uh, but they do have uh, Oubre, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond will be back, and of course, the number two pick in the NBA draft, my guy James Wiseman. Um, I'm still taking I'm taking I'm taking Milwaukee to to, to win this one. I just, you know, I just think uh, Giannis is is, is going to be too much for those guys, and I don't expect James Wiseman to come out the gate and just, you know, go into beast mode just like that. Um, I think we'll get a, a regular step game anywhere from 25 to 33, 34 points. Uh, Draymond is going to be Draymond, but I got to go with, with uh, Milwaukee on this one. I agree with you as well. I mean, Milwaukee – has been the best regular season team for the past two years, for whatever that's worth. Um, and then Golden State defensively hasn't looked good throughout the preseason. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they don't have Clay. I think they're trying to figure out lineups to play next to Steph. Um, I expect them to put up buckets, but like you said, I don't think Wiseman will play too much in this game. Um, and then, you know, are we sure we know what we're getting from Kelly Oubre and from Andrew Wiggins at this point? So it's Steph and then a lot of question marks, whereas Milwaukee, they're set. We know what they are. Again, best record in the regular season over the last two years. Drew Holiday is an upgrade over Eric Bledsoe. And I expect Milwaukee to come out with a little bit of a vengeance and, and some excitement as well because Giannis just signed a new deal. So they know they have their star in place. I agree. I think Milwaukee wins that game. Yeah, Definitely. Um, I, I will say this, though, in regards to their defense. Their defense will get better once Draymond is playing because Draymond didn't play the entire preseason. He's he's their defensive anchor, and he's somewhat of a coach on the court as well, so he can kind of point guys in the direction of what they should be doing. But, but again, I, I, Milwaukee's going to win this game. No, no, no question in my mind. Completely agree. And then that leads us to the games I'm really looking forward to because they have back-to-back -back games that I, I'm super excited about. The first one is Brooklyn at Boston, the official return of Kevin Durant. We got to see if Kyrie's going to burn Sage again when they go back to Boston like he did in the preseason game. It helped. Uh, Boston, it, it helped. They it helped. It. And I'm not knocking them. Uh, you know, for the people that was trying to criticize, I'm not knocking them about it. If that's what your pregame ritual is, so be it. That's you, bro. Well, has that always been his pregame ritual, or just did he just start? No. That was my, my my only question is that I'm not I'm not knocking him either because I'm I, I'm with using Sage, you know what I mean, around the house and and, and whatnot Whoa. to clear out those spirits. But I just I thought it was a little bit funny just because it was Boston, his former team and whatnot, and I had never seen him doing it like anything like that before. So that would be my only thing. Not that I'm I I took it as a joke or whatever, him doing it, but I just, I had never seen him doing it before. Yeah, I mean, but you know how it is, bro. Sometimes when you get that that fresh pack of incense from 125th, you eager to, to put it in the house and put it in the air. And he was just <laughs> eager to put his sage in the air. He was <laughs> eager to put his sage in the air, but he, he played well. So keep doing the sage, bro. You know what I'm saying? We, we, want, to, we want to see where it goes. Um, but I'm super excited for this game because Boston was a team that I really oh, liked God. last year. I had them going to the finals and they end up losing to Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I think Boston has some question marks because Kemba's probably going to be out for a few of these games to start the season. Obviously, they, they don't have Gordon Hayward anymore, so they, they got to figure out a little bit of their depth issues, which they already had last year. I want to see if Tristan Thompson fits in with them. And then, I, obviously, we want to see how, how Brooklyn gels. So I'll give you my prediction right off the bat. I think Brooklyn handles Boston in that first meeting. Is Brooklyn in here tonight? I need mean, my what my damn nets hat. I gotta find my nets hat and bring my nets hat back out. Uh, in, in the words of in, in the words of my cousin uh, Jonathan, that silky smooth brother named Kevin Durant is back, looking 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 very much like Kevin Durant. He got a dunk in the other night against against Boston. That was nice. He was shooting it from the from everywhere on the court. Kyrie was looking well. Levert was was doing his thing coming off the bench. That Brooklyn team just looks really good, and like you said, Boston definitely has some holes in it. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe they they might need to try to throw their their hat in the, in the James Harden race and uh, and see if he can he can help out their organization. Um, I did, however, see that. Um, shout out to to to, to our NBA insider uh, Scoop B uh, from Scoop B Radio and Heavy dot com. He he uh, posted today. That the Nets and uh, the Rockets are are opening the negotiation uh, talks back up for James Harden. 
Um, so we'll keep you guys posted on that. That might be their little Christmas gift for, <laughs> to themselves, picking up James Harden. Uh, but again, my pick for the game, I, I got to go Brooklyn. Just if I'm even just based off of what I just saw the other day in that preseason game versus Boston. And like you said, it's not like Kimball's going to be back right now uh, for the start of the season. So, and because again, I know Kimball wasn't there for the game, but he won't be back either on Christmas Day. So I got to go Boston and, and it might get ugly. We, we both in agreement on the last two Milwaukee and Brooklyn and uh, the game of the, the game of the, of the nights. Uh, NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers led by uh, the, the ESPN ranking number one and, and number two, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They will be at home and they will be taking on my young boy, Luca, and um, and the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I mean, you, you already know I'm, I'm not picking against LeBron on Christmas uh, today. <laughs> and, and I love Luca. I think that I loved. Um, the Luca Porzingis connection, but of course Porzingis isn't there, which is if you know that that's that's the real you know what I'm saying reason why I think that the the Lakers really take this one you know somewhat easily because it's pretty much just going to be Luca there, whereas they're going to have to worry about LeBron and 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 Anthony Davis, um, and I don't I don't think they have anyone that can go back and forth with Anthony Davis and uh, in Dallas right now, so I'm going with with the Lakers in that game. 1,000% correct, bro. The number one and number two player going up against Luka, who doesn't have his running mate. Oh, by the way, they're trying to integrate Josh Richardson from the Seth Curry deal, so they don't have Seth. Now they got to get Josh Richardson right. Oh, by the way, Lakers have a better bench now than they did last year with Schroeder and Montrez. Lakers handle this one easily. I don't know if the Lakers are putting their banner up on opening night, against the Clippers, which would be the ultimate troll move, I or if they're going to wait for Christmas. That. I would love it. Right. <laughs> I don't know if they're I don't know if they going to do it that night or if they're going to do it on Christmas night. But either way, I expect the Lakers to roll in this game. Luka just doesn't have enough help. And as, as special as Luka is, we know it. It ain't enough to go up against Braun and AD on Christmas Day. No way. Yeah, that's too much. But but shout out to Luka. Um, he, he, he's, he was the uh, projected favorite to uh to get the MVP this season, um we, you know we, we you and I are both Luca fans and I think you know he's gonna be good for a long time to come. But Christmas Day that's going to LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Shout out to Kuzma, he got a little three year extension, forty million dollars. So it's looking like he'll be there. You know, well it, it seems like that because you never know he can still <laughs> get on that on the move. But uh shout out to to Kuzma anytime. You know, brothers get to the bag. We always applaud that. That's what we, we love seeing the players, you know, get them checks in. So shout out to Kuzma on that. And uh, the last game of the night will be those Clippers. They're going on the road to face the team that knocked them off uh, after having a 3-1 lead in uh, this, this past uh, bubble playoffs. They go up against uh, the Denver Nuggets. Um I got to go Denver on this one. I'm sorry, man. I got to go Denver. I just think, you know, they, Denver, it, at, at this point, come into any time they play the, the Clippers, they, they're they going to have a, a extra heightened confidence because of what they were able to accomplish last year in the playoffs, coming back from being down one. Um, and I, honestly, I the Clippers got worse to me. Uh, you, you, you lose Montrez. They didn't really adjust any of the issues um, that they that they had last year as far as uh, point guard. They did bring in Serge Ibaka, but I just I, I don't I don't I don't I don't think Serge Ibaka is is, is going to do that much better trying to trying to hold down uh, Jokic. I'm sorry, so I I, I got to go Denver on this one. So on this one. On the first predictions of the day, we, we were opposite. This one, we're going to be opposite as well. I'm going to pick the Clippers. Um, I do think Serge is an upgrade over Montrez, just for what they need him to be. Um, Serge obviously can shoot the ball better than Montrez, so he's a better pick-and-roll guy there. I think he's a better rim protector than Montrez, so he'll help him there. Um, but I, I think Denver actually wasn't able to upgrade because – they lose Plumlee and Grant, who were both rotational guys off their bench last year. I know they're expecting more from Michael Porter, and they may even be expecting more from Bo Bo this year. Not to say those guys aren't ready to do it, but I, I got to see it first before I buy into knowing that those guys are going to do it. Denver had a really deep rotation when they were able to bring in Grant, 
and Miles Plum, uh, Plumley, uh, Mason Plumley. So I think they they're not as good as last year. I also think the Clippers will take this as a personal game to them where they're going to want to come and show everybody that, look, we are better than this team. They just happened to catch us last year in the playoffs. Um, I got the Clippers. Think see way I, I think – I don't know what P we're going to see. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know which one we, we're going to see. He, he claims he's motiv- motivated. He said he's fully healthy for the first time in three years. He's been with his trainer. These are all the things he said. Um, but what I do know is that Ibaka is an upgrade, and I think – some of those other pieces, as we talked about on the previous episode, I think just fit a little better now and have a better understanding of what their role is. Plus, I really like Ty Lue as a coach. So I think Ty Lue, knowing what they what they didn't do last year in the playoffs, is going to be fully aware of what they need to do to be able to beat Denver in their first matchup. So I, I've got um, the Clippers winning that game. Shout out to Ty Lue. Um, again, congrats on getting that head coaching job. Definitely uh, well-deserved. I do... I think he is a really good coach um, as as well. All right, so we got a little bit of difference. We got we got the first and the last games where, where we differ. After three games in the middle, we, we, we saw those three the same. Either way, it's going to be a good day uh, for sports fans. You got the NFL game early in the day. You got five NBA games. And uh, if you're like me, you got Madden and NBA 2K on deck for in between games, after the games, before the games, through the games, everything. We're going we gonna to be getting it in on, 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 on the virtual side of things and in real life. Because I like to have my game playing. Uh, I put the game on, on the laptop and then I'll play the, the game on uh, <laughs> on the TV. Oh, yeah. So There's going to be multiple TVs going um, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be food exchanging everywhere. There might be beverages. I know there'll be beverages. I'm not even going to say there might be. There will be beverages. Uh, so, again, it'll be a great day of flipping between games on TV. Like you said, Madden and 2K, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure my nephews is going to be talking reckless. And uh, just just a great opportunity to hang out with the family while enjoying sports. Definitely, definitely. Uh, really quick, uh, somebody that that else that got a, a, a early Christmas gift, uh, Rudy Gobert got that extension. He got the Supermax, two hundred and five million dollars. If I was Rudy Gobert, I was going to jump on that. I'm t- <laughs> definitely taking that two hundred and five million. Like you, if you're Rudy Gobert, you can't turn that down. You know what I mean? Giannis is, doubt. but you know, he, Giannis is somebody who could be like, you know what? I'm going to wait and. And, but if you're Rudy Gobert and you get that two hundred five million dollars supermax, you better take that money and, and run with it to the to the all the way to the bank. So uh, congratulations to him. Um, again, we mentioned in the show that we would be back on our on our charity tour uh, this year. You know, we 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 were trying to find a way to get around COVID and uh, still be able to do what we've done for the kids the past. Uh, four or five years, well, past, you know, eight years we've been doing our charity run, but as far as seeing the kids on Christmas and dropping off toys to them, that's been uh, the past five years. And, uh, you know, we were still able to link back up with uh, with Family on Three and to make something happen. Uh, so this Tuesday, we will be uh, back on our, on our charity run uh, right here in the Bronx uh, where myself and Eric, well, not me, because Eric, 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 you know, you know, moved out out on the state on us, <laughs> but I'm I'm in the Bronx right now. Uh, but we are going to be in the uh, in the South Bronx uh, in the Abraham houses um, on Tuesday from one o'clock to six o'clock. We will be giving out Christmas gifts to the kids. Uh, we're breaking it down though, just to keep everything COVID safe. We're gonna do it in sections, so it'll be ten kids at a time that will get to come in, pick up a gift. They'll get to take a socially distanced picture with Santa. So that's why I was saying earlier in the show, we, we're, we're probably going to be able to get Santa to uh, to say a few words to the people at home. I'm, I'm definitely going to get him to, to get a ho, ho, ho up in there. A Merry Christmas and, and all of that. Um, but we're super excited that we were able to team up with the Family on Three Foundation uh, and, and the cool kids uh, as, as well to, uh, to put this thing together um, and, and get these gifts out to the kids. You guys know that, you know, one of our favorite things to do um, through Real Fans Real Talk is to give back to our community and to the youth. And we thought that that might not have been able to happen this year because of COVID. Um, but again, you know, we, we, we made a way out of no way. Absolutely, man. Um, you know, unfortunately, I won't be there 
but I know you're going to be holding it down for the team, man. And it's, it's always great work that, uh, you know, we try to do with real fans, real talk, man. That's a, that's a, that's a definite fact. So for all the kids, you know, we, we definitely hope you enjoy it. And we know you will. Santa Claus will be there. And we might have a, 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 another surprise or two that's going to pop up with us when we get over there. And, of course, the cameras will be out. Um, but, again, it's the Real Fans, Real Talk, Charity Talk continues. And, and we, we're, we're just – we're grateful that we've been able to share some of our blessings uh, with, with some less fortunate children, um, you know, right here where, where we're at in, in, the, in the Bronx. So a big shout-out to the Family on 3 Foundation uh, and the cool kids, you know, for, for linking with us to, uh, to make this thing happen. You guys will, you know, you guys will see a little bit of the footage later on in the show. Once we once we switch things up, you guys will see that later on in the show. Um, and we got we got we got a couple other surprises that you guys will see during the show as well. A um, couple of us uh, live performances will be uh will be going down. well not live excuse me they'll be done uh, via Zoom. But uh, you, you know we can't we can't have Christmas without some holiday music. And you guys know we know a lot of singers. Um, so we had to make a few co- phone calls to uh, make that thing happen. So we will have some some some, some vocals. We we'll have some vocals on the show for you guys to enjoy as well. Just a whole lot of Christmas presents, Christmas uh, love. Um, Eric, you want to get into the final thought? Final thoughts, man. Yo, happy holidays, everyone. We appreciate you guys' support. Um, keep tuning in, man. Everybody, be safe this holiday season, and uh, just wishing many blessings to everyone out there. That's a fact. And I'm just going to, um, again, I'm going to thank the organizations that have been blessings to us and continue to be blessings to us. Our sponsors, uh, Petro Home Services, Kmart, the Rosado Firm, Soundview Liquors. Um, and then really quick, make sure you guys are following us on, on our social media. Uh, the website is realfansrealtalk.com. If you're not in the New York City area, you can check us out on the web Thursday nights the same way. Watch live from anywhere in the world. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. Twitter, Instagram at Real Fan Talk. And uh, subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For the Fans Productions. And also make sure you subscribe to all of our affiliate podcasts, the Real Fans Real Talk podcast, the Sanchez Show, and, uh, and, and Shooting the Shit. They're on all uh, major streaming platforms. So make sure you guys are checking us out because when we're not on TV, you can, you can listen to us while you're driving in your car, while you're sitting at home. The podcasts are, are always lit, always informative. So make sure you guys are subscribed to everything. And uh, once again, happy holidays to everyone. We hope you guys are blessed and safe. If you if you are um, if you're not able to be home with your families because of COVID, uh, we still want to wish you guys the best. And maybe you guys can get on the Zoom call and try to celebrate that way. But nothing but love from the Real Fans Real Talk family. Absolutely, man. I couldn't have said it better myself. All right. Well, with that being said, for myself, Trip Young, my brother, legend in two games, Eric Sanchez, we up out of here. Peace. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the 